Okay, so here are favourite colours, starting with Green Appetite Genuine by Daniel Smith. Um, I bought it because I thought it'd be really useful for foliage. Um, and yeah, it is useful for foliage, but it's a beautiful shade of green. But what's really nice about it is that um, it granulates very nicely. So you'll notice that uh, once it dries, when you can look over it when when we're doing we've done the other colours. So it's really beautiful when it dries. Next one up is Yellow Ochre by Schmincke. Um, this one is uh, something I replace a lot. I find it one of my core colours that I just wouldn't be without. I use it a lot mixed with um, strong pinks for skin tones just to take the you know crazy pink look off them. Um, I use it with mixed with browns with greens to take the acid look off greens. Fantastic colour. So the next one is Transparent Pearl Orange by Daniel Smith. I bought this really on a whim. I, I It was recommended by someone on a website and uh, as a useful primary sort of a colour um, but I actually use it uh, I, I use it all the time I don't really use it as a primary I just use it because it looks fantastic mixed with chrome orange um, so any deep gives great richness to any deep orange so that's by Daniel Smith next one Venetian Red I would very very rarely use it on its own because it's really quite intense as you can see it's a very strong rich colour um, this one's by Schmincke um, I would use it to make your browns richer I'd make it to use it to make yellow ochre richer and to make burnt umber that bit warmer so the next one is burnt umber by Schmincke um, a color that I find myself replacing all the time because I, I couldn't possibly without burnt umber burnt umber is mixed with um, indigo to make soft grays uh, it's my go-to brown really um, used uh, dark or light it's just something I use absolutely all the time the next one is Payne's Grey. Now, I was completely addicted to Payne's Grey. This one's by Schmincke. I was addicted to Payne's Grey before I discovered Indigo. And uh, I still just think it's the most fabulous, gorgeous colour. Um, when do I use it? I, I use it if I want a sort of a slightly colder <clears throat> version of Indigo. Slightly less blue. But again, to mix it with other colours, to deepen them up is, um, is lovely. But on its own, it's just a beautiful colour. So the next one is Mountain Blue. Uh, quite wishy-washy. Now I'm not going to use technical terms here so please just bear with me on that when you're going to have to get used to it. I find it quite wishy-washy, not a very rich shade of blue um, but a useful blue for uh, any light blue. So that one's by Schmincke. So the next one is Naples Yellow, um, a colour that I use um, a lot. Uh, what do I use Naples Yellow for? Anything that is not a really bright acidic yellow. So if I have a soft apricot yellow or um, maybe yeah, anything like that that's a very soft yellow that isn't quite the rich yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, Naples yellow, I, I, I enjoy it and I use it quite a lot. I wouldn't be without it. Next one, Lemon Yellow. Now this one is by Dale Rowney. I have found trouble in the past finding a lemon yellow that's very transparent. So this is Artist Quality by Dale Rowney and um, yeah, it's good and transparent. Love lemon yellow, I wouldn't be without it. I mix it with fallow green to make a rich lime green. Um, and I wouldn't be without it. The Hansi Yellow, I bought this at the same time I bought the Transparent Pearl Orange. It's the most clean, intense, warm yellow I've ever come across. I absolutely love it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of strong, warm yellows and I like to use it neat, but I also mix it with greens. Um, Chrome Orange is a lovely shade of orange. Um, I would use this a lot mixed with Transparent Pearl Orange just to give a kind of a variation across my um, orange. I also find that I mix it with red, um, not, not not mixed thoroughly, but mixed on the page so you can still see the two distinct colors. It just brings richness to your red. Um, scarlet, yeah, uh, I tried to do without Scarlet for a long time. Um, I would sort of make do with a Liz and Crimson and uh, Chrome Orange, but or a Cadmium Light or something. But I really, it's it's a personal choice. I just love to be able to use a really bright red um, when the need takes me. So this one's by Schmincke. So the next one is Opera Rose. Now I used Opera Pink by Daniel Smith for a long time. Um, and then I was warned, oh, it fades, it's very fugitive. And so I bought this one by Windsor & Newton. I'm not sure if it's 100% light fast, but it seemed to be a bit more light fast than the um, Opera Pink. So I switched to Opera Rose. It's as close to the shade of um, Daniel Smith's Opera Pink that I could find. And it's perfect. It's perfect for everything I, I need. I use it for skin tones mostly. Um, the next one is Alizarin Crimson. 
Uh, I don't use it as much as Opera Rose, but um, I particularly like to use it, as I say, when I'm adding richness to a flat, um, a flat area of scarlet, I like to add Alizarin Crimson um, because it just breaks up the broad expanse of flat red. So that one is by Daniel Smith. Um, no, it's a, it's a good colour and I, again, it's not one of the ones I'd be without. Okay, so Indigo is the colour that I refill the most. Um, it's by Schmincke and ever since I discovered it about mm, two years ago, three years ago, uh, I really wouldn't be without it. I use it for shadows, I use it for uh, for for clothes, I use it to, for, to, to darken uh, colours. I think I mostly use it neat though, just as indigo, because I just love it. So Ultramarine by Schmincke. Um, a kind of a plain blue uh, I know that doesn't really mean anything a plain blue but it's a light wishy-washy blue that is useful um, so this one is Cerulean by Schmincke and this is the one I use for my skies um, looking at it first I thought that's not sky colour but um, sorry just fixing some of those colours I my hand lent on um, yeah no Cerule Cerulean is it's um, I thought it wasn't good for a sky colour but it turns out it is it looks great, um, really, really thickly layered, maybe a couple of layers on the paper that I use. So, um, yeah, I really like it and it gives a great intensity and warmth to, to, to my skies. So the next one is Cobalt Turquoise. I used Helio Turquoise for a long time, also by Schmincke, but I find that Cobalt Turquoise is just that way more intense turquoise shade. Um, it's a great, great colour. Again, I tend to use it neat I just because I like the colour. I just think it's such a beautiful colour. Uh, I tend to go bright rather than dark so that I can be more versatile and mix up. You can always make a muddy colour, but you can't make a bright colour. So here's Phthalo Green. Um, not a huge amount of use on its own because it really is a, a quite a sharp jade. But um, mix that with Hansi Yellow or Lemon Yellow or Yellow Ochre and you'll have every shade of foliage that you could possibly want. Or Burnt Umber, of course. Um, the next one, Purple Magenta, kind of have it just because it looks so gorgeous. Uh, I don't use it a huge amount, but um, sometimes I just want to differentiate two different shades of pink. So uh, I'm happy to have it alongside Opera Rose. And that one's also by um, Schmincke. So that's my Purple Magenta, which is a gorgeous shade. My last one is Moon Glow. Um, I kind of have it there just because it's just the most beautiful girl at the party. Um, not sure that I use it a huge amount. A beautiful granulation effect. I keep meaning to use it more, and I and I really don't. But I, I love it, and uh, and I wouldn't be without it because it is so pretty. Okay, so um, those are my selection of colours, and um, hope you enjoyed this uh, short explanation of them. <laughs>